Hey, I'm Robert. Welcome to Rhino Dillo Designs and welcome to the next episode of The Sync Build. Today, we're going to be going over the non-plumbing. Plumbing. plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be doing this sort of off-grid. We'll have electrical, but we don't have plumbing out here in our shop So what we have to do is come up with some sort of system to be able to get relatively clean water to be able to work with Wash things off with use within our, our pottery and clay and everything and wash up and clean up with so that's what we're gonna be doing today We've got some hose and a pump and a couple buckets and other things here that we're gonna be using to actually build this and put it all together and make it function properly. I'll be going through the the different components here in a second. I'll make a list for you in case you're interested in tackling this project yourself. It's relatively simple. There's a concept of siphoning that's going to be going on here that's kind of interesting and a little science adjacent, but it'll be fun. So let's get started with the build. We're getting this over to the shop. Yeah. All right, so number one thing you're gonna need is an industrial sink or whatever sink that you choose to use. I have this industrial one that was actually here when we bought this property, but a similar one will cost you around 75 bucks from a big box store. They're not very expensive. You'll need some hardware to go along with it. Whatever you have on hand is fine. It doesn't matter if you have the hot and cold valve. Only one valve is actually gonna be working and it's gonna be whatever temperature your water's at. A downspout for the sink itself, just the regular sink connection. You don't need a P-trap or anything like that for this setup and then of course your framing and countertop or whatever you want to build to house the sink itself now I did it this big this wide both to have a work surface to, to use and for adequate storage below for the bucket system and everything else we're gonna put in here and maybe some storage for other things all right a few other things that you're gonna need so your main workforces here are gonna be three main things it's gonna be your buckets which is gonna house all your water your water pump so this is a transfer pump it's very important that you get a transfer pump that means that it will not be submerged in the water so you're not gonna put this thing in the bucket you're gonna hook it up externally that way you can run electrical to it there's no problems there. and then your water filter now this is a whole home water filter by GE smart water is the product name for it the filters always get sold separately so you'll need to pick up the filter that fits your water filter and there's several different types I went with string wound filters and that filters out a broad spectrum of particles probably ideal for the clay situation that we're working with now if you're working with something that's not as fine as silt and clay you know you can get a different filter but this is what I'm working with. A few other things that are gonna be essential your pump is gonna come with a length of hose of some type so it'll already have the connections on it normally it's only the intake hose that it comes with you'll need to get another length of hose I have half inch hose with three quarter inch diameter outside and then along with the hose that you're using you're gonna need appropriate adapters to fit whatever hardware you have so for example my sink is gonna have a half inch water connection here coming down from that faucet end Take. So I'll need a half inch adapter to fit onto that. The adapters specifically for a vinyl hose like this, they're gonna be like these push-in adapters, okay? They have the little teeth on them. These are great, you can just put them in. They will normally hold on their own, but you'll wanna go ahead and pick up a packet of these. These are stainless steel clamps and they have a socket or flathead screw head on it to tighten them down. So these will fit over your hose, your adapter will fit inside, and then it'll clamp down around it to make sure that this doesn't pop back out. Another thing you'll want to pick up is a packet of grommets. Now these specifically, let's bring you in here, these specifically look like this. They're little rubber gaskets that have like a rabbit cut out of them. So these go well on the lids of the bucket since it's that thin material. What you're going to do is cut a hole the diameter appropriate for the grommet and then stick this in and you'll want to get grommets that are the exact diameter of your hose that you have. What those grommets do is allow you to get an airtight seal so when you have the lid closed everything connected you'll be able to create an environment that has negative pressure in it. Now that's not essential for the function but it just helps it function better. Alternatively from grommets you can usually find these types of fittings. It's a little PVC fitting and the original plan that we had was to stick these in the lid bottom them out flush against the lid put silicone around that and seal it and then this this hole here is the correct diameter for our hose where it's an airtight fit we're going the grommet direction here but we still have these 
in case we change our mind. It might be helpful for you to pick up a tube of silicone caulk. That way, if you do have anything that you need to seal up or make some mistakes or wrong cuts, you can do that. It may be helpful if you don't have it already to pick up a little hole saw. I just picked up this little kit for like 20 bucks. It's cheap, it'll do the job. Just go to your local home center and, and find one that works for you that has a small enough diameter to cut a hole for your hose. And lastly, you'll need water. <laughs> And that's pretty, pretty obvious, but that's, that's pretty much the main components. Okay, so with that being said, you know the equipment to get. A list of it will be down in the description below, but let's go over how the bucket system actually works real quick. Basically, to illustrate what's happening here and the concept of a siphon, if you've never done it before or never been exposed to that before, you have a hose and you have two water sources, two water levels as well. It's essential that one water level is higher than the other. Essentially, what happens is you have this phenomenon that happens where the water level wants to even out with itself when it's connected to each other. So if there's an interruption in the water, it won't work. But as long as the two water sources are connected, you will be able to level out that water. And that's basically what's happening using the two bucket system. So you have one water source you have here, and you have the hose that connects the two. The transfer pump will suction that water through the system. Keep in mind that the suction will actually transfer it into this bucket, symbolizing the second bucket over here, and then go up through the pump and in through the filter and out into the sink itself. So there's a little bit extra to this, but this is the basic concept, okay? So you have the hose that sticks into your higher water source. You have the pump that sucks that water through. And then you have your secondary bucket. And as long as your secondary bucket has a lower water level than your primary, water will transfer. And then if you lower this even more, the water flows faster. If you raise it up to closer to the water level, the water slows down to a trickle. So essentially that's what's gonna be happening through the two bucket system. And so we'll go ahead and start getting that together. I'll explain a little more along the way as we get it together too. Glued the P-trap on. You're not supposed to do that? The purpose of a P-trap is to block the gases that come up from the sewer, but it also captures sediment and solids that can come through here, and you can empty that out. When you do plumbing yourself, make sure you can take it apart easily to maintenance it. Soap box number one. There we go. Now I'm ready. Okay. Oh, that's easy! Ooh. <laughs> it's gross. At least you power washed it. I did. Yeah. There you that's go. gross. Nice. Okay, there's not a spider. It's just grass. No, I power washed it. This should be good. A few days ago, spider could have moved in. Hey, hey! Now it's just a sink. Now it's just a sink, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, this is the correct fitting. It's interesting. They had like this smaller fitting with an adapter on it to be able to hook up into this. Yeah, they had the incorrect size. Like this is an adapter that fits onto the smaller fitting. It's so weird. And you're supposed to have this. Yeah. Right. We're putting it on the cold. Yes. I need to That's what it. I automatically reach for. Do you automatically reach for cold or do you automatically reach for hot? It doesn't matter. I don't automatically reach for one or the other. I just reach. Uh, I automatically reach for cold. Every single time. Much better. All right. So we've got that hooked up. Normally I would like, you can put a cap on this, which I may have to go back and put a cap on this. They sell caps for these things. Um, it depends on if this valve is good or not. If it's, if it's good, it won't leak. If it's not, then I have to put a cap on this. <laughs> what do you mean leak? Like, it, would it leak out of that hole? It'll leak out of this hole. Oh, okay. Because it goes, so the way, the way faucets work, 
the way faucets work, you have two valves located here, and these two valves feed into a central chamber here that mixes the water and feeds it into the whatever spout is coming out of. All these valves work the same if it has a hot or cold. The ball valves are a little bit different. They have a hot and cold water coming into the same source. That single lever valve will manipulate that, but whenever you have two valves like that, it's two little mechanisms that open up the water flow into the central chamber and then come out. So if that central chamber is full and this valve is faulty, it can leak out the bottom. Mm. So if, if it starts leaking, we need to cap it. Maybe we just need to cap it in case I accidentally turn it on. You want to drop it in or you want me to drop it in? You drop it in. I drop it in. What side do you want the sink on? You're the wall. I'm the wall? Okay. So this one, right? Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. You didn't test fit it. I, I uh, may have failed to test fit this thing. Pause. Let me just make sure I did it. Do it this way. Oh no! So this is what happens when you have the measurements wrong. But, but, this will work. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, it'll work. No. Then you can use it from either side, and especially if we're gonna have casters on this. No, I don't like it. You don't like it? No. Happy wife. Happy life. I know. I know. What if you routed this side and, hold on, hold on, you unscrew the screws and just move that board over? You wanna do that? Yep. Test fit, numero dos. Toward you, right? Toward me! And, yay! Let's just pretend like that's how it happened the whole time. Yes. <laughs> All right, now that that fiasco is over, we're gonna build the actual bucket system up here. The space under there is about 31 inches wide, which is about what I have marked out on this tabletop here. We're just gonna build it all up here. We'll explain things along the way. We've got a hose spanning the two buckets to transfer water between the two. So if the dirty bucket has sediment down at the bottom, we need this to sit no more than like three quarters of the way down into the bucket. Yeah. That way it's not trailing the bottom, picking up all the clay particles. Yeah. Same on the other end. Same depth. Yeah, same depth. About right there. All right. It's worked very well. And is very upset that I'm using her garden shears to cut vinyl hose. Yes. We just need to make sure, I think, that the drain for the sink, that hole is cut in the yes. first, right place first. Yes. I was thinking you could saw this off. Get it close. Get it close, and that way you can drill the hole in the right place. All right. Let's pretend for a bit that what I'm screwing in here is actually like a drain pipe. Standard drain pipe will be probably about eight inches long. So it'll go into the bucket. It'll go into the bucket. It'll work for now. <laughs> we know that this main drain is gonna be probably right there. So I just marked it that way we know that, that drain, that's where the drain's gonna go. Let's see if this grommet will fit. It should. See that? It's like it was Yay. made that way. Yeah. Success. Hose fits great. Look at that. So that's how it's gonna go. Yay. See? And that just goes right on. Right on. Right on, brother. <laughs> right. So let's get this other one. Maybe I should do it. Do you want to do it? Is it too scary? You want to try it? Yeah. No, you can try it. Okay. Here. Where am I going? Right there. Right there. You can go a little faster. I don't want to hit the table. Ugh. There you go. Ugh. There you go. I did it. 
Hey. It's got that thing on the end. It does. Don't uh, take the battery out first before you do that. It's like I'm an artist or something. I know. Mine looked like all jagged and everything. You just gotta know how to put the right pressure on. Grommet. Grommet. So we got the grommet in. Grommet in, getting the hose in. That one's deep enough. And there's a lot of jokes here. Not that kind of channel. There's our post, there's our connection there, and that should be an airtight seal. We need a drain hole and a pump hole. We need a drain hole and a pump hole. Right about there. Oh, I'm just gonna put the pump on the opposite side. I'm gonna put the pump here, yeah. Two in. Okay. And this filter. That filter needs goes, to go inside. Goes inside. Correct. So, how are we gonna get this through the hole? Yeah, um, I'm gonna have to figure. Oh, Drat, you were right. He can't puzzle when I'm not holding the camera. I wanna see. If... Of course not. Oh. Grommet is rubber, so it may stretch over it. It's not what a grommet is designed to do, but there it is. Oh, you took the filter off. Yeah. I was like, wait, did you just put the wrong end in? No. So our filter housing has a connection here. This is the inlet. And so you can just screw this one down until it's nice and tight. And the good thing about doing these types of fittings is that you can connect them like this. You install all your fittings first and then connect the hose and the clamp and you shouldn't have any problem getting it, screwing things onto each other. I'm gonna leave this long just cause I don't know where things are gonna end up. You can put the little metal thing on before you put the... Yes, put, put your little clamp on before you stick the hose cause these are, these are bite fittings, so they won't they won't back off. Give it a little room on each side and clamp it down. All right, so that's on there. Buckets are in place. Buckets are in place. We've got everything kind of set up top. Everything's still left long right now. We're gonna cut the hoses to length once we get everything set up and know that it works. So bear with us. But right now we're connecting this adapter to the intake into the inlet hose. You'll need either two large crescent wrenches or some two player pliers or you know, something to do this. Now we're gonna grab one more of these clamps. Set this in here, clamp it down. Snug, not tight. Everything should be hooked up. You're gonna take your filter housing. You're gonna drop the gasket on the floor. You're gonna clean it off. <laughs> put it back on. <laughs> grab on your filters. Just make sure that that's sealed properly. So there's that. Theoretically, everything should, should work now. This pump does not have like an on off switch. It's just, if it has power, it has, it's on. Oh. Yeah. Maybe we should put water in the bucket first? Yes. So we're gonna go in here. Yeah, I think it, it's, it's a quarter of the way up now. Okay. Alright, position it under. Alright, so we're about to see if this works. Okay. Oh, there it goes. It's pumping. It's pumping. If these are leaking, 
Do they need a plumber's tape? Do plumber's tape and it'll be fine. Looks like we got a bit of a leak here. Gross that there was dirt in the pipe. All right, I think that's gonna be it for right now. We've gotta run to Home Depot to get a few things, you know, figure things out here, get everything cut to length and everything and, and, and finalize, but it works. Not efficiently right now, but it works. I think the water levels have a lot to do with it. All right, it's exactly a week later. Um, right now, Hannah's sick, so it's just gonna be me and you and a lot of stationary shots, but I hope that's okay. I just went on a Home Depot run, picked up PVC pipes, some fittings, an end cap for the faucet connection, a couple other things just to get the, the project rolling. I think we've got everything we need here. We've already tested the system. Everything kind of looks good and seems like it's gonna work, so let's go ahead and put it all together and get it in its final version, and we'll test run it then. So one of the parts that I'm replacing, the screwed into the bottom of the sink and went into a P-trap. I don't need a P-trap, I just need a straight shot into the bucket, so I'm getting rid of this. So I got a longer piece of PVC pipe, another fitting. I've gotta cement those two together with PVC cement. So let's do that real quick. Gotta make sure each surface is clean before you do it, and then uh, apply the PVC cement and stick them together. Just bottom it out, give it a slight twist. All right, this is a fairly instant bond. It takes about 30 seconds. It melts the surface of both components and basically welds them together, and it's a permanent bond, so it's, it's great. And it's really quick and easy to do. Just don't get the stuff on you. Next, I wanna make sure that I have enough length to go into the bucket, and not too long that I can't get the bucket out. I think nine inches of pipe will do it. So I'm just gonna mark nine total inches here. Score that. Doesn't have to be precise, but just about. Cut this off using my coking saw. Ideally, I would've clamped that down, but I don't have a clamp out here, or a vise. Yeah, it's in my garage. Need to move it out. <laughs> then you can take one of these deburring tools and just just clean up the cut. You don't necessarily need a deburring tool. You can do the same thing with a utility knife. Just gotta make sure that the blade's really sharp. All right, now I can screw this back in and then we can get on with the rest of the build. And you see this goes into the bucket below the lid and so there won't be any splash out or missing and this bucket can't shift around very easily. Another thing that I went and found was my plumber's tape. Now when we tested it, we had some leaks so I'm going to go and seal up all the threaded connections and see if that fixes the problem. One important thing to remember when you're doing this is that the tape needs to go in the direction of the turn, that way it doesn't unravel itself. Okay, we've got all our threaded fittings sealed with the plumber's tape, so we should have no more leaks at those threaded fittings. All right, so I wanna give this thing one more good test run before we actually start cutting hose and getting everything to fit here. Okay, here we go. Hopefully this thing works. Okay, something's not working. Let's find out what it is. Well, that didn't go to plan. What's not happening here is the siphon effect, and I think that may be remedied by using more water. So let's try that. Oh. Oh. I don't know if you know this, but five gallons of water is really heavy, and it's a long ways to my spigot over there. Okay, so hopefully with that much water in there, we'll get the siphon effect going and all will be good. We'll see, let's, let's find out. Okay, so there is something happening. The water level on this side is definitely higher than the bucket on this side. There is a good connection between the two, so hopefully the What's happening is this bucket is filling up faster than the uh, bucket is able to siphon off into the clean one. So we'll see what happens here. See if creating a little bit more of an air seal will help. The water levels have evened off now.
All right, things seem to be looking good. I missed one connection to get with the plumber's tape. I'm gonna have to go back and do that because you see a small drip here. Other than that, the water levels are holding. This one isn't filling up uh, quicker than it can empty out now. Now that we've got a good siphon and this one, you know, the clean bucket is air sealed. So I think we're good. Uh, so this is what I get for not looking at all the hardware and reading the instructions before I install this thing. This bracket gets screwed on right there. They just go over those holes and that connector clamps them on. Now I have to take this off, redo the plumbing tape and put them back on. It's not really a big deal, but it's just frustrating. Just hang nice and fun. Okay. Yeah, the length of this pump I'm not gonna change because it has a weird fitting on here that I can't replace. There we go. That should be good enough. This line here connects up to the sink. It does not have to be this long. It will allow some length. There we go. So here's what we've got. We've got drain coming into this bucket hose about a fourth of the way down, siphoning off into this bucket. Another hose going up to the pump, pump going to the filter, filter to the sink, and the cycle starts over. And it works. All right, there you have it, a working sink. We've got everything situated, everything's buttoned up tight. So let's plug it in for one last test to make sure everything's sealed and not leaking and everything's good. Perfect. All right, we've got a working sink. The siphon works, the pump works, everything is working, it's flowing, it's filtering, it's great. I'm very happy about this. You can probably build this for around 300 bucks. The sink with a C by Diamond Core, which I'll have a link to in the description below. That's what inspired this build. That's a like $2,200 product and would be great if you're an established potter or you know need that for whatever you're doing and have the money to spend on it. I don't, so we're just trying to get this, this studio going and get the equipment that we need to be able to make pottery. And this is one of the essentials, it's a sink. Uh, some sort of source of water and being able to you know, have a place to wash things out and uh, take care of any cleanup. So that means we can move forward with other projects for the studio and start making pottery. So I'm excited. I know Hannah's excited. I hope that you're excited. I'm glad that you came on this journey with me. I have a list of items needed to create this, build this in the description below if you're interested in that. If you're gonna tackle this project, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you're planning to do, what you're planning to use it for. That, that would be exciting and I'd love to hear about that uh, journey for you and how that goes. If you're new here, we do, we're planning a bunch of these types of videos, just different builds, art-based videos, building videos, making videos, all of that. We've got a shop build series going on where we're building out this shop that I'm in right now to make it a workable, usable pottery studio, an art studio, and woodworking shop. If you want to come along for that, there's uh, some information in the card in the corner, or you can click on the video icon at the end of this video. That being said, thanks for coming along with me on this. Please subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you next time.